Hello everyone, good afternoon. My name is Peter, and I'm a member of the OpenShift Developer Productivity Test Platform team, the DPTP. We mostly take care about the CI system for the OpenShift organization and also for other related tools that are required to actually build and release OpenShift. So let me start this talk with a little bit of recursion. So this is me a year ago standing on this stage. The hoodie was different, talking about the OpenShift CI. This year, talk about OpenShift CI was done by wonderful Sally and Urvashi in the morning, so I don't need to do that anymore. Uh, so a year ago, specifically, I was talking about this new cool feature that we're working on called job rehearsals, and it was in progress at that time. So I'm very happy to be able to, to stand here today and to be able to talk about how, how it works and how it helps developers in OpenShift organizations in setting up their CI jobs. So not everyone here is a, a native English speaker, so I'll start with a little definition. Rehearsal is not a technical term. Uh, so Marion Webster says a rehearsal is a practice session preparatory to a public appearance. That's still a bit abstract, so let's say that rehearsal is a dry run of a theater play or a music gig. Uh, you try things before you actually go in front of the audience and, uh, and do your thing for real, like I spent yesterday evening rehearsing. And we borrowed that term for uh, testing runs of CI jobs. So I'll give, go into more detail. So let's talk about the world before rehearsals exist, like the year ago. Uh, so some of you may know that in OpenShift, the, the CI system that is used there is called Prow. Uh, it's, also, it's also developed and used in, in upstream in Kubernetes. And it's a cloud-native CI slash CD system that's, that's uh, designed to run on Kubernetes. Uh, like contrary to some like more traditional CI systems like Travis or like Jenkins or something, uh, the definitions of what is supposed to be executed when, uh, when something happens in the repository are stored separately. So you don't have like file like dot Travis YAML or Jenkins file or something like this uh, to get together with your code in your repository. In OpenShift and Prow, these definitions about jobs for several hundreds of GitHub repository in OpenShift uh, uh, organization are stored centrally in, a, in another GitHub repository. The, the repository is called uh, OpenShift release. Many of you probably know it. And we expect developers to own and change and develop their jobs in, inside OpenShift release. So before rehearsals, the story of like changing jobs, adding ones, changing ones, uh, could be quite a sad story. So imagine you wanted to add a new job for your repository. So what you needed to do is uh, you, you would go to OpenShift release, uh, you would uh, clone it, you would write a new definition using YAML, you would open a PR, uh, then you would like struggle a bit to make all the checks happy, then you would need to find someone to, to review the change in OpenShift release, of course, the most, most like, like the best person who can, uh, always the best person who can review your code lives the half a world away and is probably still asleep. But eventually that guy uh, gets up, uh, reviews your code, uh, PR merges, and now Prow knows about your new job. Like the bad thing about this is you have no idea if the job will, job will actually work because you just wrote a bunch of YAML and you can't really execute YAML. So what you needed to do a year ago was you went back to your rep uh, repository, opened something like CI test do not merge, you had plenty of these, and then you waited until your new job finishes and very often it just failed on something because you were not aware of like for example, Python not being in the, in the image on which, your, uh, on which you build your job. And as a bonus to this, right now your PRs on the, on the repositories are broken because you have a CI job that can never pass. So everyone else is screwed until you fix the job. So we, what you need to do right now is go back to OpenShift release, open a PR. Yeah, you get the idea. You probably hate us right now, or hated us in the past. So that was the problem. We, we, decided, uh, we, de we decided to solve this. Uh, and uh, when stuff starts to work, yeah. So let's get back to rehearsals. I was mentioning that for us, the rehearsals are the testing runs uh, of CI jobs. So that's still a bit abstract, so let's be really concrete. So we want it when you go to OpenShift re release repository and change some job, we want it to 
provide you the, uh, like execute those jobs and provide you the results as if they were run on your own repository. So if you, were, if you made a mistake like this uh, on, in your job or something like that, you would immediately get a result about, okay, this, is jo this job won't work. So like no, no screwing up your repo, no delays, no waiting for anyone to review stuff and no going back and forth between the repositories. Just the like, native CI experience. I change this, something is tested, and I get the results back now. So we went on to build this. And to be able to, explore, uh, to explain how this actually works, I need you to understand at least a little bit how Prow works in, internally. And, and I'm not going to spend more than three minutes about this. So I, I hope I can do that. That's quite a challenge. So let's start with the like, event that is interesting for us. So a PR is opened on some repository. What happens? What, what Prow does internally? So the first thing that happens is that GitHub will notify our Prow that the event actually happened, and it provides us with all the details about what was open, opened and where and what are, what are the hashes of the commits involved and stuff like that. Uh, so now Prow looks up the jobs that are, uh, that are configured for the repo and for that given branch and creates the pro job custom resources, like standard Kubernetes custom resources. Uh, the thing is, Pro looks for this definition in a config map where, where it stores all the definitions for all the jobs for all those 20, 200 uh, repos that I mentioned before. And the thing is, like I mentioned before, like these, these uh, job definitions are actually tracked in the OpenShift release. Uh, OpenShift release uh, repository and are synced through the config map and asynchronously in a, like a GitOps way. This will be important for the rehearsal later, so let's just continue. Like, let, let, let's just leave this like it is and let's continue with there. So we have the Prow jobs. And another part of, uh, another part of Prow sees these Prow job custom resources being created and for each of them it creates a standard Kubernetes pod. Uh, using a specification that is a part of the, of the Prow job. This, po this pod does the actual workload of the test that's supposed to be run, and there's nothing, nothing special about these pods. They get scheduled by Kubernetes or OpenShift, they run, and they eventually finish. Like I said, they are not special, so, so we can take, uh, so, so they can use uh, more resources in the, in the cluster. In this case, they, uh, most of our jobs are using some other config maps that are present there. Uh, CI operator configurations and templates, we don't need to care about what it is. Uh, the important thing is, like, the content of these config maps is also present and synced from the OpenShift release repository. It can be changed with, with PRs. It will be in, in, important later. Eventually, pods finish, either they succeed or they do not, and Prow collects the results of the pods and puts it into the state of, status field of the Prow job custom resource, and some different part of Prow takes the status field of a Prow job and reports it with a GitHub API to the, to the pull request when you can see them. Like, Prow does a million other things, like a million of them, but this is the part that's actually somehow relevant to rehearsals. So, when we know this, how, how this works, how can, how can we build rehearsals? Like the thing that when I submit a PR to OpenGIF release report of job definitions or something, I get these, I get these uh, results as a standard CI jobs. So let's start again. Like what happens when I submit a PR to OpenShift release? Like Prow would try to find all the jobs that I have configured for OpenShift release, master branch, and would create the Prow job CRs. The thing is, and the roadblock is that, like the jobs that we want to run, uh, the rehearsals, are not configured for OpenShift release. They are for some different repo, part of OpenShift, part of Knative. I don't know what else. Like, that's first problem. We can we can run pretty much any job from the. Uh, we would need to run pretty much any job from all the jobs that we have in OpenShift release. The second ro ro roadblock, and that's a more fun one is that Prow at this moment doesn't even know about the, about the jobs. As far as Prow is concerned, the jobs that are supposed to be run might not even exist because they are not in the config map. They are not even yet in the OpenShift release repository. They are still in the pull request, like the pull request that's not even merged yet. So Prow itself 
has no idea what, what's happening there. So we can cheat a little. And uh, like the cheat uh, is this little tool we wrote. It's called PJ Rehearse. And it's, uh, it's, a, it's a thing that runs in a pre-submit configured for OpenShift release repo. Uh, so let's talk mo more about this cheat. Uh, so it was designed. Uh, the tool was designed to run in you know, pre-submit, so it always run in a cluster, and uh, of the repository that holds the job configuration. The tool itself doesn't have any use of, uh, outside of this context, so we, it's only designed to be run like this. So being run in, in a pre-submit, uh, the PJ rehearse has uh, access to the Git content of the repository, so wh when it runs, it can use Git to uh, get the candidate job configs, the new ones, the changed ones, and uh, compare them to the baseline configs, those that are already present and merged in, 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 the, in the repository. And so, so once, once we get this comparison, we get the jobs that, were, that are new or that are changed, and these are the jobs that we want to rehearse. So far, so good. We need to somehow modify them. For now, let's be satisfied with calling the modifications magic. I will get to the magic later. And then we submit the resulting route jobs to the cluster. And let's, let me dig more into this. So remember this part where Prow itself was looking into its config map and uh, select something and creates a Prow job. We can make the PJ rehearse tool to be sort of a, like Prow freeloader and creates prow job itself. So prow jobs making prow jobs, like this obscene uh, thing. For, uh, of course, this like a service account that runs PJ Rehearse needs the rights to do this. Most of the pr re normal prow jobs do not have these rights. Uh, but we are okay with PJ Rehearse doing this. So we gave them the rights to create prow jobs. And once PJ Rehearse creates the Prow job custom resource in the cluster. The rest of Prow doesn't, doesn't give a damn about like, why these Prow jobs were created or by whom and when. It's just like, oh, okay, there's a new Prow job, let's schedule a pod and do the rest of my thing uh, and continue eventually showing up in your PR. So like, like I described it, uh, the process wouldn't be enough. Uh, if we just took the jobs and created the Prow jobs like this, it, it wouldn't work for various like stupid technical reasons. That's why we need the magic I mentioned before. Like so, we we actually need to fix up these uh, candidate jobs enough so they work. But we need to make sure uh, it's we, we still execute your job so we don't by mistake fix it or something. Uh, so let's talk about this. So first thing and the most most trivial things about this is like we need to fix up the names of the job because when rehearsing, it, uh, the uncommon situation may happen that we will actually run the jobs that, that would otherwise never be run together because they, they are jobs for different repositories and different branches. So if we, just, if we haven't renamed them, they would show up as CI prow unit in your PR and they would probably override their own, uh, their own uh, status checks or in, in GitHub, and you wouldn't know what actually run and what succeeded, et cetera. So we do the simple thing and we just like expand the names to describe, okay, this, uh, that this, this, this CI prow unit is a rehearse of a unit test for our repo branch master. Different CI prow unit is a, some, a rehearsal of our repo for different branch, et cetera, et cetera. So that's a simple case. Uh, the second case, uh, we need to deal with this like schizophrenic situation for Prow is not really prepared for, where the job needs to test the target repo, like the one for which the job is origin originally written for, but needs to report results to the PR to a different repo, OpenShift release. Like fortunately, Prow has some low level means, and I won't go into the details here. I'm not sure if we are using the means or, or abusing the means, but they work, so we can achieve that. And the third piece of like the simple magic is that the jobs that we are rehearsing uh, do not necessarily need to be pre-submits, like the jobs that run on PRs. They can be periodics, which can be thought like, like a prow cron jobs or something. So the periodics are not tied to any PR, so if we just made rehearsals from them and, and submitted their, submitted their uh, prow jobs, uh, 
they would run, but they, would they wouldn't uh, report results anywhere because like, they're periodics, not supposed to. So we need to actually like, do some heavier modifications and, and uh, convert these periodics into pre-submits with the same workload and make sure we haven't like, like inadvertently fixed something that you broke. So that's, that's simple magic. We do more. We do, we, we do some, some crazy magic when making rehearsals work. So this is when the second piece where I, when I said like this will become important comes into play. Like the pods, if we, if we submit a pro job, even the rehearsal and it, it, uh, the pod is created for it, it can use resources present in the, in the cluster, config map secrets and stuff like that. Some of these resources are, like I said, tracked also in the OpenShift release repository, which means we have the same problem. Like we have some, some the PR that we are like rehearsing for may have changed the content, but the content, the, the, like the changed content is not yet present in the cluster. So if we just run the pod, it would try to use some like CI operator config or template without the modification in the PR, which is, might not or might not be the like, good thing, like the modification may be broken, uh, stuff like that. So we need to make sure that the rehearsals that we, that we, that we execute are uh, like seeing the content that is consistent with the PR for which we are rehearsing. And we do this for, like, with, with two means. One is like, more simpler, and we do, do this for like, environmental variables. When we simply like, sever the dependency of the, of the pod uh, on, the, on the content in the cluster, and we just inline the content from the PR uh, directly into the pod specification. Uh, we can do this everywhere. So, we, uh, so the second and more complicated thing that we do, we, say we actually uh, create temporary resource just for the purpose of running the rehearsals uh, so that the pods can use this like, isolated config map or something uh, and seize the modified content. Uh, unfortunately, this means that like, PJ rehearse needs to be a little bit complicated than it, than, than it, than it was. But still, it also has some advantage. So it does this. Like we, it needs to make sure that the uh, config marks are created. They need to make sure. Because we, we, can, we can also, in multiple PRs, we can change the same thing in different ways. And we need to make sure that the like, correct uh, rehearsals for PRs see their content and not the rehearsal content like, of some other PR that changes the config mass in some, some different way. And it's like a little, little trick to make this all work. The advantage of this is that when PJ Rehearse knows about this additional OpenShift release content, it, like, we can also benefit from that because right now we know that some, some content, like a template or something, changed. We haven't touched any job, but we know that we changed something on, on, on which some, some potentially not even touched job, uh, touched job uh, depends, and we may add this like job that would, in the past wouldn't be rehearsed. Uh, we, we can make sure that we rehearse that because the author of the change, for example, in the te template might be interested in that. So, in in general, like if if I simplify this, whatever you touch in OpenShift release repository, and it it can affect how some CI jobs uh, of some some CI job in the repository is executed. We will rehearse it. And I think that's like pretty cool, and it made life easier. So I would like to concede the talk with a few comments on some things that are not that cool. Uh, so one of uh, one of the thing is reruns uh, that are generally pain in the butt. Like the the cheat we are using when we first uh, execute PJ rehearse and that. Uh, uh, selects with jobs should be rehearsed and creates all stuff means that. From Prow, you can't interact with individual rehearse. So if 20 jobs are rehearsed, 19 of them passes, and one of them is red, you have no, you, you have no mean how to rerun just this one. Maybe it flaked, maybe that didn't. You need to get like all or nothing. Uh, so that's, that's, that's annoying, and we can hopefully eventually fix that. And the second thing, which is very annoying, is that some, some PRs simply uh, affect too many jobs. Like, if, 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 uh, if I change all the jobs, like, shall I rehearse all of them? Like, several thousand jobs? I don't know, probably not. Uh, 
probably it's not, it's not, it's, it's excessive, and nobody would even probably look at the results. So we deal with this uh, in two layers. So, so we have things like templates that, that, that they, they are basically piece of infrastructure that, that many jobs depend on. So if I touch a template, I know that like hundreds of jobs, jobs are affected. So we, we preempt this by like sampling from the, from the set of jobs that we should rehearse. We, we just select some of them and, 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 and run them. Uh, but if I, if, I, if I, even with this optimization, if the PR ends up touching too many jobs and too many jobs would be rehearsed, uh, we just give up. Like right now the number is uh, 35. And the problem with this is, is of course, like the large changes that affect everything are the ones that need the rehearsals most, but our tool just says, okay, too heavy, I don't care, I give up, your fault. So there's some definite room for improvement here. Oh, so I attempted to walk you through in, in 20 minutes uh, through, uh, through the feature of uh, OpenShift CI that I found some cool. I hope it was at least a bit interesting for you, and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Looks like I have no questions. Still, thank you very much for listening. <laughs>